Hi, I'm Noah with Pitbrow Cooker. Today I'm going to show you how to do a brisket on your Pitbrow Cooker. This is so simple and the results you're going to get will absolutely blow you away. So let's get started. What we have here is a whole packer brisket. It weighs about 13 pounds. I just took it out of the cryovac, gave it a quick rinse, and then I gave it a quick pat dry, and here we are. So to cook this whole packer brisket, we're going to need a few things. We're going to need a couple sharp knives for trimming. We'll need some olive oil, which is optional. You don't have to do that, but I like to add that. And then um, our pit barrel cooker, beef and game seasoning. That's what I recommend. You could put the all-purpose on there, any seasoning, salt and pepper, whatever you like, but it really comes out well with a beef and game seasoning. First thing I like to do is flip it over, and this is I like to trim it down to where you have about a quarter inch of fat on here. So a lot of this fat isn't gonna render, which means basically cook, it's gonna slow down your cook time, and you just don't need that much fat on. All the knives we use, we use Dexter. They're a US product. And at any opportunity, we always try to, to select something that's made in the USA that's quality. This definitely is, and it's not that expensive. What we'll first start out doing is just cutting some of the fat off here. So we're gonna start removing, removing the fat. Now that we've got most of the fat cap taken down, there's areas where I went a little deeper, but sometimes you have to go deeper to figure out just where you're at there. What I like to do next is flip it over. Very simple, we're gonna go through. This is the time you want to get a little bit smaller knife. This little layer here that you can see I'm, I'm going underneath, it kind of hardens up a little bit and um, you know makes for, it's like kind of removing the membrane off of ribs. Um, it just it makes for a little bit more tender bite. Um, also, so the, uh, the seasoning can penetrate the meat. You just slowly want to start taking pieces off. This cap right here, it's slowly just get it, it's just gonna pull right off. So we're gonna continue to work our way right through here and see I'm just basically removing little chunks. I'm working down through here. You kind of just follow the layer of fat right down. We know that whole section right there kind of cutting right right in the fat area. I'd say about halfway. Uh, if you go all the way with it, it'll actually take it all off. So we don't want to do that. Keep things moving along and give you an idea. That's about as far as I'm gonna go with it. cutting. We've cut our flat back and uh, we've trimmed it up good. We've got both sides done. Next, we're gonna go ahead and season it up. Again, olive oil is optional. I just like to add it. Go ahead and pour a little bit of olive oil on, rub it in. So light coat's fine. Pull the flat back, add some olive oil in there, and we'll flip it over. Next, we're gonna go ahead and use the beef and game. We're gonna pull the flat back. Give that a good season. Okay, once we have it seasoned, we're ready to place the hooks in the brisket. Um, this is actually very simple. I'm gonna show you an easy way to do this. So from right here, I'll, right here at the curve of the hook, I'm gonna go right through, kind of make a mark with my finger. I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna place the hook right in there. I also wanna get this piece. So we'll kind of tuck the, uh, the flap up a little bit. And right there where the hook where the hook bends again, make my mark. I'm gonna come right through there and put it right through there. The second hook is gonna go in a little bit differently. So we're actually gonna connect this second hook just like this and it's gonna go in that way. So a good way to do your measurement. We know that the bend in the hook is right about here. So that's our mark. We'll take it like this. We know that right here is the bend in this hook. So we'll make our mark right there and we'll go in and we'll insert the hook right about, right about there. Okay, so, and we're gonna go all the way through, pushing down through into the other side. And once we're through there, we can go ahead and, and pull this up, hook that other one, and we are all set. It's just like that. We are ready to go place it on the pit barrel cooker. It's been about 20 minutes since we lit the coals. As long as your brisket is about two to three inches away from the coal basket, you're good to go. So we'll go ahead and hang it, hang it in there. We're all set. We'll go ahead and put the lid on, close the lid. 
walk away. We're gonna come back in about, oh, I'll check it, in about two and a half, three hours. Okay, it's been just three hours. We're ready to check our temperature on the brisket and we'll see where we're at. It's really good. It's right where we wanna be. We're getting a nice little bark in here. That's giving me a reading of 140 right now. Um, we're, bring, we're looking to, again, take this temperature to 160, then we're gonna pull it off and we're gonna wrap it. So I'm gonna let this go for oh, about another half an hour for a total cook time of about three and a half hours. Okay, an additional 30 minutes has gone by. We're gonna go ahead and check for temperature. We've cooked it right now about three and a half hours. Let's see where we're at. Okay. So actually right here we're at 145. So this is actually a great example of what we call when meat hits a plateau. So when that happens, we just got to work through it. Um, not a big deal. It happens. And I'm going to put the lid on, come back, check in another half an hour. Additional half an hour has gone by. We're ready to check our brisket again. And we've cooked it right now about, uh, about four hours. We got to be really close here. We're right on the mark. 160, 159, 160. That is perfect. So we're going to go ahead and take this off. I always like to put the lid back on while I'm inside. We can leave the rods in for now and we'll get the grill grate later. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add it, just add a little bit of beef broth. Um, and that's basically what I'm going to use for uh, my wrapping juice. I took two sheets of tin foil, I laid them out. And I'm going to go ahead and continue to add some beef broth. I used about half a cup. Um, you decide between a quarter and half a cup is perfect. You want to be careful not to puncture the bottom of the tin foil because we don't want that to leak out. Turn it like this. So there we go, and we're going to go back and we're going to set it on the grill grate just like this. So. Uh, fat side down, and that's perfect. Real great, in. We're going to go ahead and place the brisket in. Close the lid. And we are going to start, uh, we'll check temperature in about an hour and kind of see where we're at. Again, we're looking for uh, 200 degrees. Ready to check the brisket. We've let it go another hour, uh, wrapped up, and, you know, we're looking again about 200 degrees. For a total cook time right now, including the wrapping, we've we've been about right about five and a half hours. 199, so we're really close. I'm gonna go ahead and pull it out. So I've let the brisket rest, still wrapped inside the foil. That's something that a lot of people make a, a big mistake of, is not letting meat rest. Um, a lot of people want to just carve right into it. You let a lot of the juices out, and you don't let the juices settle in the meat. So any kind of good roast, uh, whether it's a turkey, uh, pork shoulder, brisket, tri-tip, anything like that, you want to let you want to let meat rest for, for a little bit and on a brisket I'd recommend about 30 minutes. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to remove the flap here. Take that off just like this. You can move this, this off to the side. You can get some nice pulled brisket out of here. You can see, I mean literally, this meat is so juicy and tender um, it's amazing and you can as you know we didn't uh, we don't inject it with anything now you can always add uh, chips and things like that for additional smoke as you can see there's a smoke ring right there just looks absolutely delicious and again you know it pulls just pulls right apart so as you can see the uh, the grain is going basically in this direction here so we can turn it just to the side if you want. There's a lot of different things you can do with this. You can get, uh, you, can, you can cut it up a lot of different ways, but uh, this, is, this is a good way to go. So as you can see, it's really tender, pulls right away, and um, just absolutely delicious, really tender and juicy. Well folks, that wraps up for doing brisket on your pith rail cooker. As you can see, really easy to do. It's not difficult at all. The key things you want to remember are your, your temperatures basically. So you're hanging the brisket till it hits 160, you pull it off, you wrap it, then you put it back on the grill grate until it reaches a temperature of 200 degrees. Never added any charcoal the whole time, never put any more briquettes in. Thanks for watching and if you have any questions please contact us at pipperellcooker.com.